have two cousins. It's Rusty down here at the warehouse. I'm going through lots of stuff that we're packaging up to ship, things that we're selling. If you want to see some of that stuff, come along with us today. At the very end, I'll show you uh, a bunch of these uh, brooches that we're getting into. I think we got over 300 that we're going to go list. And after that, it's going to be the earrings. After that, the necklaces and the bracelets and all the other junk. But jewelry is not the only thing we sell, folks. We got lots of antiques and other things. Let's sh let's show you right now, I guess. have here folks is an uh, an antique it's from the 1800s and uh, this is an antique decanter box for items that you would travel with uh for for you know for drinking alcohol and you can kind of tell here we got some condition issues big time we got this veneer uh that is on here that has come uh unglued more probably cracked and stuff just from poor um storage and just the ages and uh, just not not taking real good care of it but we got the original key in here which is cool we got this design here of a shell on the top as well like this <clears throat> very cool looking thing you got the handles here but look at those cracks folks looks like where the wood has separated out clearly this has undergone some extreme temperature changes probably incredibly dry but let me pop this puppy open and show you kind of what we're looking at. I'm showing you exactly how it looked when it came to me. All right. And um, let me turn it this way, actually. Inside of here, really cool. I actually bagged this up, but it wasn't in a bag. Uh, right here uh, we uh, was is a bunch of these chips, a bunch of these pieces of wood. Every little piece of something that I could find inside of there, I saved so that I could restore and try to glue them back as best as I could. But what you have here is, right here is this, basically this old decanter. And uh, it's very, very old. You can see the pontil here. Very deep, very uh, jagged right there from this old bottle. That's where they blew it and it was attached and then they cracked it off at the end. Um, and then you can see um, up here the remnants of like a gold leaf that had been painted. And look how uh, how not uniform the top lip of that thing is. And then look at this little, um, uh, the, the kind of lid here, the little stopper. And look at all of that <laughs> bubbles and stuff in there. It's a heart shape. Still got the remnants of that paint on it, that gold leaf paint. Really cool old decanter. And then inside here, a few other items. I put this in a baggie. It wasn't in a baggie, but this is old dice. Some dice. So maybe they were having some drinks. Maybe they were gambling, playing some cards um together inside here we also have these and i'm not exactly sure i haven't researched what these are folks if you know what they are uh please feel free to leave a comment but these are <clears throat> some sort of old um tools they are um made of, of of metal steel and they're very sharp on the edges and uh there is definitely a, a manufacturer name here if i can zoom in um if it'll zoom in on it let me flip her over uh, right here okay folks there it is something xl cutlery man it's really cool but i don't know what these are for you can see that the tips of them here they're a little bit rusted but they're very sharp cool little kind of faux wood handles here but move them back over so that's in there in addition, we have two shot glasses. These are li these are pre-prohibition era shot glasses, I believe. I mean, if they are original, and I'm not 100% sure that they are original, but you can see that they've got those little marks on the bottom of them as well. These little uh, hashtag type etched 
deals. They're a little bit thick to be pre-prohibition, but it's possible. It's possible that those were put in at a later date, but I do believe that the three of these are period appropriate. You got this little goblet. This is probably for something like um, some sort of like an aperitif, some sort of like a little a liquor. You can see this big bulging pontal here. It's not slick. It's bulging out, but this is like a crystal little goblet. And again, remnants of gold leaf at the very top on the rim. Beautiful, good condition aside from uh, the wear of the uh, initial gold leaf. And then these awesome glasses. This white um, kind of, uh, whatever you call this, it's not etched, I don't think. If I, if I, if I re, if I rub my nail on it, it's not scratchy. So I think this is just like printed on, or not printed, but you know, painted almost like a stenciled type thing. That gets worn off really easily. But that, but this whole, the frosted white, uh, uh, motifs or text is very, uh, typical of pre-prohibition era glassware and um, shot glasses, and then it's quite thin. The glass is quite thin. So we've got two of those, but I believe that they're two different ones, two different heights and two different patterns. But you can see this is very much like um, what the painting on walls or wallpaper would have been like in homes back in that Victorian era or um, even pr prior to that in the 1800s. Beautiful little box, definitely terrible condition, uh, condition issues all over the place. But what I have out here is um, some glue, and I'm actually going to use this stuff. This is a uh, this is like an epoxy, a quick setting epoxy. And so you basically, uh, you know, you dab a little blob here of this one, a little blob next to it, and then you mix them up, and then you quickly put it on. And I'm going to glue these um, on to the top here, there, and uh, here and here to begin with. And then it's going to be kind of like a puzzle. I got to take the rest of these. I got to search around the box, find as many of them as I can to glue back on. I do want to resell this, and however I can make this look better, the more likely it'll sell and sell for more money. But just a super cool uh, piece of the past. I love these kinds of items. <music> of various watches here that need to go out. Some of them are working currently. Their batteries are in there. Others, um, we need to get some new batteries for. Kind of some of these are bagged up. We got a couple of each, like for example, right here, we've got some fossil watches, decent condition ones, um, but they don't have batteries in them or the batteries are not working. Then we've got a couple here that are Tommy Hilfiger. Um, these have come just in other lots. We didn't buy these individually. Here's one, I don't have any idea what the brand is, but you can see, I think it's a cheaper watch, but it's got a very cool face there, a nice dial. And uh, so we got some of these others that like, you know, bands that are the plastic bands, they're working, but it's scratched up pretty significantly. So I don't plan on getting, I don't expect to get a whole lot of money from these. However, uh, somebody will buy, buy them at, at certain prices. We got a variety of some old, uh, Timex watches, and believe it or not, some of the very old ones can still sell for pretty decent money. Also, people will sometimes buy these uh, because they need components and parts to repair other watches, and so they'll take them from cheaper watches, or the crystal, the glass that goes over it. Someone brings in a nice watch that's roughly the same standard size and depth. It's broken. It's, it's cheaper to go out and buy uh, an old dead you know watch or one that's missing some parts and you just use the part that's in there uh, to repair the nicer watch. And people do that all the time. I've been doing it for a long time. I do have a few like kind of cheaper pocket watches in here and people sometimes use these pocket watches just for fashion or for crafting and stuff and not even necessarily because they want to have a watch in their pocket. So anyways, we're going to go through these, sell these, and then also, you know, still got a bunch 
of our old, uh, older from the, you know, we're talking 1940s through primarily in the 1960s uh, watches. Most of these are out of style as far as the, the type of style of watch. Most of these are ladies watches. Most of these are gold filled. On the back they'll say, you know, 120th. Uh, 10 karat gold, gold filled, or they'll say 10K rolled gold. Um, that, there's some gold value in, in these, not high value. But if you can pick these up for a buck or two, a lot of times you can make, you know, four or five bucks on the low end for these um, if you're reselling them. And then these, <clears throat> these are nicer. I mean, I'll probably put these things up for in the $50 range per watch, most likely, and I might get a little bit more than that. These are all what they call automatics, and so you wind them up at the beginning of the day, and they should uh, work and keep time throughout the day. Um, I think these are better than watches with uh, with batteries, because batteries die, and then you, it's just a hassle to go out and buy another battery or anything. You just wind it up in the morning, and it's great. Um, some of these are gold-filled or roll gold as well. These are all men's. Uh, kind of more square, uh, and these are more rounded. Here we've got a few different brands that are that are semi nice, kind of middle middle ground, middle to lower ground. Certainly not super high end, but some of these could could catch a little bit more than fifty bucks, maybe a hundred, a little over a hundred on some of them. But uh, and then down here we talked about this in the previous video where the these porcelain uh, watch faces from pocket watches particularly can actually sell pretty well on their own. Uh, most of these actually have the movements in it. We got a couple here at the top that are just the faces. But if I were to flip them over, the movement is down in there. Some of them have the hands still. If you were to if you were to crank these up, they would still work. The stem is missing. That would have been removed when they removed it from the pocket watch itself. But some decent brands here, Elgin, Waltham, um, Hamden. And uh, here's a really cool old one, uh, Emile Jaco. Um, and uh, it's like, I think it's from a Swiss uh, watch that came with a gold case that got sold a while back, but I just think that they're cool. Put them in this little um, this little display case because somebody will be interested. Probably throw this up to sell it by itself, and this could be a fun thing to put up uh, on like a, a cabinet or maybe somebody who wants to use these movements again or needs uh, parts of them can use them again. Uh, watch parts, movements, things like that are great for people who want to do crafts. So if you ever come across lots for next to nothing, pick them up because uh, there's definitely a market for that stuff. All right, I had to take a break real quick and get out. I got to get some more packing supplies. We're running out of tape. Uh, I have a couple of unusual size packages that I have to get boxes for. And I guess got to get some more uh, bubble mailers as well. Folks, we've done 83 separate sales on eBay in the last three days. 83! Uh, it's crazy. We just had a bunch of auctions go through. This was not like this was not like a bunch of money. It was just a bunch of smaller, cheaper items. Stuff that's just been sitting on the shelves. We reduced the price. Did an auction. Said, you know what? We've already paid off all these items from lots and stuff that we've had. So might as well just make space for the new stuff coming in. That's exactly what we did. So I got to get some of these packing supplies. Get it back. And we have one particular item that sold a couple days ago. Very unusual. We've never seen one before. Never sold it before. Uh, as soon as I get back in the warehouse, I'll show you that. Here she is, folks. Uh, just pulled this out. It's on its side right now. I'm about to package it. But uh, what is this puppy? You can see it has this hand crank on the side here. Um, and it has these little glass jars kind of on the side. And this rope contraption. And then right here, this is kind of like um, metal pieces. Almost like a a brush uh, and it scrapes across these little metal pieces on this plastic and what this does is it creates static electricity um really bizarre thing i've never seen one before uh, we just sold it on ebay this came in a big lot of antiques that we bought you can see several of these are missing some of them are down inside this jar that we recovered but a few of them are missing. It's missing some components. I'm not exactly sure what it's missing, but someone's going to rehab this. Um, really cool looking thing. These old pieces of equipment um, from yesteryear inventions and things can't. There's a there's an is a sort of an oddity. There's a big collector market for this kind of thing. Um, if you, you know quirky things, even things that are clearly in not great condition. There's little cords and pieces missing and broken, and and someone knows about this. So 
Uh, we're going to give them the opportunity to restore it. I love when people can restore these old items like this. It gets me excited, uh, even if I don't really know much about it. Well, we did sell a sword here. You can see this right here as we roll up. <clears throat> Interesting old Spanish um, sword here. Um, I think it's mostly for display. I don't it might be, <clears throat> I don't think it's one that was made for actual use. I think it was a replica or made for display, but we got that puppy going out today. Uh, I want to give you an update here on <clears throat> the old Martin here. I uh, did some work, did some repair work on the crack down here, and I uh, cut out a brand new uh, pick garden put on there, and she's looking real cute right now. Uh, sounds nice, real happy to have it. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a hard one to get rid of. I mean, I'm in the selling, buying and selling business, but man, that thing is stinking cool. And then look at this. We got a new one that came into the warehouse yesterday. Let me pull this puppy out. What you're looking at here, let me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it right here, right here like this. Okay. What you're looking at right here is a 1963 Gibson ES120T. Okay, so it's a thin uh, body, uh, arch top, hollow body, arch top. You can see it's quite, it's quite thin here. Um, and it's in really, really good condition for its age. It also comes with an alligator, kind of like faux alligator looking skin, um, you know, chipboard case. But uh, this is nice. It's just got a, it's just got a, like a, a volume and uh, I guess maybe like a tone knob that kind of changes things up. It's a single pickup in the, um, in the, not the bridge, but in the neck position here. Um, <clears throat> big old thick, heavy, thick pick guard on this. Obviously, it's got the floating bridge here, uh, the tailpiece. Everything's original on this, I believe, including these uh, the tuners on the back here, these old, um, I guess these are Clusens. Yep. Very nice piece. You can see right up here is the, the number is right there at the headstock. So we can date this right there to 1963. Um, this is going to be nice. We got this for about $975, which is a really good price, especially with the original case. I think we're going to sell this. I think we got it listed right now on auction for right around $17.99. Uh, if it doesn't sell, we'll probably relist it as a buy it now at $17.99. Let that roll for a month. If it doesn't sell, we'll probably start dropping it down in $50 increments until she gets out the door. Got a handful of random items here that I'm going to list here in the store today. Just wanted to talk about it real fast before I do. This right here is more of like an orangish color, um, salmon colored, I guess, maybe a little bit darker than that, uh, coral necklace. Excuse the white on my fingers, folks. I'm not, it's not dry skin, it's white paint. I was doing some painting earlier, so I didn't get it all off. I apologize, but uh, anyway, we're going to get that up in the store. Um, I like these. This is definitely an older one for sure. It doesn't really even have a clasp. It's just kind of been tied on and crimped there. Um, here's some old thimbles. Thimbles, folks, can uh, carry some decent values. These are not that valuable. These are from different places. So Alaska, uh, this one says uh, Savannah, like Savannah, Georgia. We got the Grand Canyon, and this one's nothing. It's just an old, um, an old copper, not copper, but uh, um, like a like a brass type. Uh, of a thing, uh, kind of like, that's probably a combination of copper and other stuff. It almost looks like a penny. But uh, anyhow, um, we got a variety of uh, other things here as well. I, I was gonna say real quick, uh, thimbles. If you're in the sewing section, look around and see what they got. Sometimes uh, thimbles can be made out of sterling silver. They can also be made out of gold or have gold bands on them. So definitely take a look, uh, keep a look out for those. This is kind of fun. Um, these are old buttons, old military buttons. And someone has taken and cut off the center portion and retrofitted these to be like earrings. Now, I don't know what woman's going to want to wear old military buttons as earrings, but maybe there's someone out there. But these are vintage ones, and uh, it's just an oddity. It's kind of strange. Uh, so we're going to throw those up for sale. Never sold anything like that before. We're going to see how it goes. Here's some old uh, vintage things, uh, older to new. This is newer. It's made in that sort of Art Deco style. I like it. It's a pendant. You would put like a picture down in there. These are like old brooches um this uh, this has got a brand on it what is that catherine papesco france 
This one's an oddity. It's definitely sterling silver with this some stone up, up here. It's got a really cool clasp. It's got this sort of like a, you pop it out. And you, it's kind of like, a, I don't know what you call this clasp. You poke it in and out and it holds that pin in. There's a mark over here, but it's not a mark I've ever seen right there by my thumb. This is during that period of time whenever, uh, you know, people got real interested in... Um, in the Middle East and in Egypt and Egyptian things. And there's all kinds of uh, costume jewelry and various things with scarabs and different stuff um, from that. Uh, made to look like it came from that area of the country, though. It did not. This is a really cool kind of 19-teens. Um, the hand holding this a flower with a rhinestone in the middle. Um, po oh, I've got a lot of old postcards with greetings uh, that have the hand. Uh, in them. It's a really cool look. I think that's just the neatest looking uh, old thing. This one right here, folks, I don't know what to tell you about it. It's, um, I don't know what that emblem is. I need to Google lens it and see if I can find, but it's got these markings to the left above it and this right here. It's all etched out really nicely. And then this uh, emblem, the symbol on the back. I don't know what it is, folks, yet. It's hollow, but it is sterling silver. It's a pendant. Of course, we're going to do our research before we throw it up. I'm just showing you stuff that we got uh, that we're going to be putting up and researching today. Moving on, nothing extravagant here, just a, an old money clip. Uh, this thing is movable. It's got rhinestones in it, some black plastic uh, underneath there, but it's it's kind of, you know, it's a, a time from a particular time period look, and so it's interesting. I love this piece. I haven't put it up in the store yet, but I'm going to uh, probably in the next day or two. Um, this is a, a brooch. Looks like a paddle, but um, or like a fan, but uh, the pin broke on the back of it, unfortunately. But look at, it's just gorgeous. You got these like little uh, animals, these birds with a floral motif. Very Art Nouveau, super cool looking thing. Even though it's broken, I do think that it'll probably bring a decent price. Um, before I get over to this, I'll pull these up. This is just an example of kind of, this is an old rhinestone. It's kind of like a paste type uh, thing that they, you know, kind of, uh, you know, put together and, and made a lot of the, those old rhinestones are made from grinding down old material and <clears throat> re, re, uh, purposing it, putting it back together and making it look like a cut stone. It is not, of course, it's pretty, uh, the outs, you know, this is more like a, I don't know what that is, but it almost looks like pewter, um, the metal itself. This is kind of a cool old one as well. We're missing right here one of these three faux pearls, so that's going to bring some of the value down, but it's an interesting look. I like that how they have these uh, floral impressions on the back here. Uh, you don't usually see uniform uh, impressions like that of a particular motif on the backs. Oftentimes, it's just uh, slick or um, sort of lines, some sort of a uh, texture like that. Moving on, we got this old uh, fob. It's almost like a watch fob or a keychain fob uh, with this uh, that stuff. We've talked about this in another video, what they call gold stone. It's not gold and it's not a stone. It's neither. It's a synthetic material, but it's got that sparkly look in it. Interesting chain type of a design here with the, what is this like kind of the quintessential vintage pocket watch um clasp here so this is probably for a watch or it could have been to hold on to something else like keys or something like that back in the day i don't really know what this is aside from it's just like a little um <laughs> just a little item that you would put up on a bookshelf or something but it's it's just an alloy it's a gold tone but it's just like this man in a boat this is kind of like a parisian uh type of a little look there he's kind of cute somebody will like that um and down below here, we got this awesome old crystal uh, decanter stopper that came out of the old decanter case that I uh, showed you earlier. Uh, there was no decanter with it. It was just the stopper. So we're going to try to sell it by itself. And then behind that, we this came in one of our big lots, is this pocket knife. Right here, it's uh, Imperial is the brand, Imperial Stainless. And uh, you may or may not recognize that. That's a GS. It's for Girl Scouts, and that's the Girl Scout emblem. This would have been in like a... Uh, 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 a set with like a spoon and a fork and a little knife. It was like a little eating set, cutlery set. Uh, we only have the knife here. Not going to be a lot, maybe 15, 20 bucks, but it's cool to, um, to have things like that come in from time to time. I'm just going to show you guys these uh, as a reminder um, to always be on the lookout. These old vintage uh, odds and ends, these little 
uh, tie pins or, or little pins you can put on your shirt. Even like old stuff from like high school or college or fraternities, sororities. Old like um, a fraternal order type uh, cufflinks or pins or things can be gold plated or solid gold. So little things like these sometimes can be made of gold. Oftentimes it'll be on the back. It'll say 10K or something that it'll see. One, uh, one twentieth. 12k gf for gold filled but be on the lookout for that kind of stuff these things can have value even by themselves without being gold people collect certain things we got 4h in here we got some um salvation army stuff we got some old masonic stuff in here so definitely some some value here and then old little pins like this which can either be sometimes they're like little baby pins like pins for little kids but also um lingerie pins back in the day could also be made out of gold or silver so keep a lookout for these also oh folks this is the beginnings of a large journey through a bunch of costume jewelry what you're looking at here is more than i could even fit on the table right now a variety of brooches vintage mostly vintage to newer costume jewelry brooches folks i don't know how many are here yet i haven't counted them but after that oh we got a ton of bracelets and necklaces and oh man gobs and gobs more we're going through folks it's gonna be crazy wish me luck thanks for tuning in this week everybody um as you can see we're quite busy so we're gonna get right back to it we got a really exciting video for you next week coming soon so be on the lookout for that in the meantime good luck hunting out there hope you find a treasure at a good price let's go find some treasures rusty 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 hair